good afternoon i'm just relaxing in my hotel in bangkok and i am going to go to a cafe now to start creating my language learning plan for 2023 so it's the first of december and i need to start thinking about what i'm gonna do next year i didn't set goals for this year because my life was just too unpredictable i just kind of went with the flow but i want to have a more structured approach for next year so let's see how it goes. I have this kind of scrap paper notebook which I got from Muji. They have these really cute stamps that you can do. I obviously didn't do a very good job and it went through to the next page. But anyways, this is like scrap paper that I'm going to use to create a few plans on. Here is the view from my hotel for interest's sake. Pretty nice. And I'm going to go all the way down. And turn right and then turn right again and then I'm at my favorite cafe sausages anybody here we are this cafe is called not just another cup start by writing out all my current languages and levels so I'll start with the most fluent I'm not counting English and Afrikaans obviously so that would be Korean my handwriting is terrible I'm sorry then Japanese French we have Spanish Hungarian Malay slash Indonesian I don't want to offend anyone but um, I mix these two a lot I should probably choose one what else French oh German and Thai and there's a new baby Norwegian this is a dare from my friend. He said he'll learn Hungarian if I learn Norwegian, so challenge accepted. Up next, I'm going to use a simple dot system to rate my current level in the language. So Korean gets... Maybe I'm being optimistic with five. Japanese gets three and a half because I have deteriorated. French gets like three, Spanish gets two and a half, Hungarian gets maybe three, Arabic gets one, Tagalog gets one, Norwegian open, and Vietnamese one, one and a half, one, I don't know. Now it is time to eat my soup. This is a butternut cacao milk. It's a bacon. It seems very drink. hot, so I'm gonna leave it for a while. Soup. Now what I'm doing is writing where I want to be at the end of the end of the language, end of the year next year. So Korean, I'm keeping at five dots. That's my writing scale um, because I want to maintain it. Japanese, I would like to improve. So from four and a half, I want to go to five. Three, four, five. French, I really need to improve, so I want to go from three to four. I know this is very abstract, but this is what works for me. Spanish, I want to go from three to four. It's just like my confidence level. Hungarian, I want to be at five. I'm currently at three. This is my main focus. Norwegian, maybe a two. It should be easy for me since it's Germanic. 
Next, I'm gonna mark my focus languages, which is Korean, Japanese, French, Spanish, Hungarian, and Norwegian. These are the ones that I need to split up into like three months and focus on one language every few months. Before I plan out when I'm gonna study these, I'm going to put some broad goals. So for Korean, I would love to take the topic two exam. I'm not sure if I've missed the registration date already and I wanna aim for all group again because level six is insane, so let's get a five. Japanese, I want to do JLPT, and last time I got N3, I don't know if I can do N2 again, so I'm going easy on myself, and I want to try the N3 again and see if I can get a better score. And I want to start reading, not finish, Atomic Habits in Hungarian. And Norwegian, just get started. See how far I can come. Let's write some resources for them. For Korean, I have the Topic Hang Won Emyeon OK book. For Japanese, I have Kanji 300 book and N3 Tango book. Finish those two French textbooks, Spanish, finish the grammar textbook, and I'm gonna continue on Duolingo. I forgot Mandarin Chinese, wow. French is also gonna be Duolingo. And there's no real app for Hungarian, uh, maybe drops. And Norwegian, I have two books, which I just bought today. By Chinese, I mean Mandarin, um, just maintain. And I'm going to use Taiwanese grammar book. And by Taiwanese, I don't mean indigenous Taiwanese languages. I mean um, traditional Chinese, which is the book that I bought in Taiwan. All right, so we've got the languages and the levels or the goals that I have and the resources. In order for it to be more tangible for me, I'm gonna write the languages in order clockwise of how important they are to me. So the first one is Hungarian then probably Japanese because I've fallen really behind we've got Korean what else do we have? oh Norwegian that's a beginner baby for me looks like I wrote war Norwegian okay, Norwegian what am I missing? one two three four five six seven one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I've got everything. As some of you know, I sort of coined the idea of using quarters in a year to split your language learning up into. So Q1 being January, February, March, Q2 being April, May, June, and so forth for the rest of the year. And this was really widely adopted in the language learning community, especially on Twitter. I just split my languages into four quarters and I'll have one focus language and one one or two maintenance languages for each of these quarters. So up, you can see there's one main language for every quarter and then there are two sub languages which I want to maintain. And you'll see pretty much every month Hungarian is popping up because that's my main language for the entire year. Do I really want to focus on my French? Hmm. I guess so. I'll do that for like. No. Yes, I'll do French. Sorry for the shaky camera, I'm holding it with one hand. My tripod broke. If you would like to donate to me to get a new tripod, please go to buymeacoffee.com slash and you'll see there's an option to donate towards 
tripod, which I'm saving up for. Knees. I have chosen languages which are not too easy to confuse. French and Norwegian are completely different as is Hungarian. So I can do Hungarian, French and Norwegian at the same time, as well as doing Hungarian, Spanish, Norwegian at the same time. For me, I don't confuse Japanese and Korean because they're some of my most fluent languages and Hungarian needs to stay. I'm not going to confuse any of these. Maybe I'll struggle a bit with a French, Hungarian, and Spanish month in December. That could be a challenge. Okay, now I'm going to write what the ideal week would look like. I've taken a really different approach from what I usually do. I'm scheduling in two rest days for myself in the week because mental health. Then I'm going to do three active learning days and two passive learning days, which is just consuming content. So speaking about passive learning, which is where you can acquire a language through things like reading books and watching TV, I would like to say thank you to Lingopie for sponsoring this part of the video. Lingopie is a platform that I use a lot and I watch TV shows and movies in Spanish, German, French, Korean and Japanese. So Lingopi has thousands of videos and they upload new content every week. So it's really the all-in-one platform for you to watch TV, watch shows, and learn a language at the same time. They have dual subtitles and you can click on words to save them as flashcards. I think it's a really good method to use something like Lingopi for passive learning or active learning actually because you can do quizzes and you can really focus and hone in on those vocabulary. But I think it's a good method because it's not boring. You're never going to get bored of watching movies or TV shows. And it's not just you sitting in front of a text. I'm actually going to add it in for Spanish and French. So let's do that right now. And the best thing that I can tell you is that you can get a 55% discount on Lingopie if you sign up using the link in the description. So do check it out. See if Lingopie is right for you. And let me know what you think. My pen smudged. Oh no. Now what I've done is took an example of what I would do in Q1 for example and what I would do every day of the week. So I my schedule goes active, passive, rest, active, passive, active, and rest. So for active days I would be using my Hungarian textbook. For passive, I would be reading Atomic Habits. I also forgot to add that I do have um, short stories in Norwegian, which is by Oli Richards. And I'm going to add that to my passive learning resources for Norwegian. And then active day, again, Hungarian textbook. And then rest day is nothing. I'm a Christian. I rest on Sundays. I don't want to do any work, any language learning. I'm just going to chill. Also, for the sake of my mental health, I want to chill. <laughs> So obviously now I can continue the process that was for quarter one with, with Hungarian as my focus and you might be wondering what happens to the other languages like French or Norwegian. I'm just going to wing it. Honestly, I don't want to plan out every single aspect of my life. So I'm going to do what I can, when I feel like it, how I feel like it. That's what I'm going to do with the two sub-focus languages and I'm just going to put in really a lot of active learning with my main language for the quarter. So if you're following a similar approach as to what I'm taking, you can write down the ideal week for quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, quarter four, and then what you want to do active, passive, the rest day. It's also a good idea like I did to write down your resources. So let's go through what my plan is so far. First of all, I've written my current languages and the levels, and then the levels that I want to be at. After that, I have written my goals, such as taking the topic exam, taking the Nihongo Norio Shiken, JLPT, finishing a grammar book, and I've, on the side, I've written all of the resources that I'm going to use for the language. Maybe not all of them, but the main resources. And then my focus languages, which are Hungarian, Japanese, Korean, Spanish, French, Mandarin, Chinese, and Norwegian. Then I've created some timelines for me, myself, with the focus language for each quarter and the sub-languages. And after that, I have written the ideal week with active passive rest days and examples of what I could do on those days. That's 
basically it. That is my rough language learning plan. I winged it completely. I did not know what I would be doing coming into this video. Uh, I hope it was interesting for you and do let me know how you're planning your language learning and how you are approaching your goals for next year. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye!